Mary Shelley was born on August 30th, 1797 in London, England. Ten days later, her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, passed away from complications due to childbirth, leaving her father, William Godwin, alone to raise both her and her half-sister, Fanny Imlay. Mary was not given the standard upbringing that many females would have had in the early 19th century, as her parents were not your standard citizens. Her father is considered to be one of the fathers of philosophical anarchism, while her mother is one of the most well-known feminists from the Enlightenment period. Philosophical anarchism is an anarchist school of thought which contends that the state lacks moral legitimacy while not supporting the violence to eliminate it. William Godwin helped develop and support this idea throughout the Enlightenment era, and even wrote his own book on the concept. This book is called An Inquiry Concerning Political Justice, and in summary it states that no matter what, society will continue to grow until it reaches perfection. William also expresses his idea on human perfectibility being anarchist because it sees government and related social practices such as property monopoly, marriage, and monarchy as restraining the progress of mankind. Along with being a novelist, William was also a successful poet. Mary Shelley's mother on the other hand, Mary Wollstonecraft, is the author of the famous novel Vindication of the Rights of Woman. The core beliefs of this text include not viewing women as ornaments to society or property to be traded in marriage. Wollstonecraft maintains that they are human beings deserving of the same fundamental rights as men. For the time, this idea was radical and was not received well by many, but it did have a lasting impact on the feminist ideology, and more importantly, an impact on Mary Shelley herself. As Mary was growing up, she was often exposed to the ideologies her mother had believed in through her father as well as his friends. She also read many of her mother's books herself, including Vindication of the Rights of Woman. This gives reason for the underlying feminist element within the book Frankenstein itself. Her father's friends, such as the poet Taylor Coleridge, exposed her to many different elements of literature, enhancing her writing ability. She was also tutored at home and loved to study the writings of William Blake, as well as Latin, French, and Italian. The amount of literature she was exposed to is immense, and it formed her into the amazing writer she was already at the age of 19. All of her mother's writings, her father's writings, the poets that surrounded her, and her personal studies gave her an incredible ability to write. The radical element her parents played in her life allowed her to surpass the boundaries society had set for women at the time. She did not sit back and do nothing as was expected of her. Instead, she wrote an incredibly successful novel and left a lasting impact. As Mary grew up, her mother and father were not the only people who formed her into the amazing writer she became. Her childhood was full of interesting people and events. Mary's home life worsened when at the age of four, her father married his next door neighbor, Mary Jane Claremont, who already had two children of her own, Claire Claremont and Charles Claremont. The new Mrs. Godwin favored her own children over the daughters of the celebrated Wollstonecraft. Her father was often distant as well and was not the most caring man, leaving Mary alone and unhappy. Due to this difficult family life, she spent a lot of her years prior to writing Frankenstein with family friends in Scotland. When Mary was just 16, she met the love of her life, Percy Bysshe Shelley, due to his interest in her father's work, Political Justice. He adopted the ideas presented in the text and eloped with Mary. Her father forbade them from marriage, but Percy threatened to commit suicide if she did not elope. They rebelled against their family and years, stating that they both were prepared to ignore the law of the land and the rules of society. At the time, Percy was already married to Harriet Shelley, and they had their first child on their way. When she found out about the elopement, she drowned herself on November 9, 1816, in Serpentine, a lake in London. Around the same time, Shelley's half-sister, Fanny Imlay, also committed suicide, rumored to be hopelessly in love with Percy. These are the first of many deaths that surround Mary Shelley's life. Percy and Mary had two children, Clara and William, before they were married on the 30th of December, 1816, at St. Mildred's Church in London. Clara died at 13 days old of being prematurely born, and William died at the age of three due to cholera. After marriage, the two moved to Italy in 1817 and had two more children, one named Clara Everina, who died within her first year of life due to a fever, and the other named Percy Florence, who was their only child that reached adulthood. 
During this time, Shelley was working on Frankenstein. In May of 1816, seven months before she got married, Mary made a trip with her fiancé, as well as with her sister-in-law, Claire Clermont, to a friend of hers named Lord Byron, who owned a house on Lake Geneva. This is where Shelley had her vision of Frankenstein, as well as where her niece Allegra was conceived by Lord Byron and Claire. One stormy night, Shelley had a dream consisting of a ghoulish and hideous phantasm of a man, which was her motivation for Frankenstein. She began writing when four people in the house decided to have a competition as to who could write the scariest story to scare one another. Participating in this challenge was Mary Shelley herself, Percy Shelley, Lord Byron, who was also renowned for his poetry, and Byron's personal doctor, John Polidori. This challenge was the initial spark of the creation of the novel Frankenstein, but many other influences made the novel what it was. Shelley initially intended Frankenstein to be a short story, but as it turned out, Percy liked the novel so much that he kept urging her to elaborate until it became a full-length novel, which was published in 1818. Frankenstein was a huge success. People were absolutely thrilled to read the horror novel. However, in 1800, the society was highly sexist and believed that no woman could ever write a book as successful as Frankenstein. It was common belief that her husband had written it instead of her, as he was a well-renowned poet and writer. After the success of Frankenstein, tragedy struck Shelley once again. Four years after the publication of Frankenstein, she was pregnant with yet another child and ended up miscarrying, almost losing her life along with the baby. In the same year, her husband died in a boating accident, leaving Shelley alone with Percy to raise. In sorrow, Shelley immediately compiled all of his works in The Complete Poetical Works of Percy Bysshe. Mary Shelley and her son then returned to England, where she wrote numerous short stories and poems. Some of her works after Percy's death include Matilda, which was not published during her lifetime, Valperga, published in 1823, and The Last Man, published in 1824. She worked harder than she ever had before, leading to several bouts of illness, which she never truly recovered from. Eventually, her sickness caught up to her. She died on the 1st of February, 1851, at the age of 54. She was buried in St. Peter's Churchyard in London, where she still lies today. Mary Shelley's complex life had a huge effect on the book Frankenstein itself. There are influences that can specifically be found in the book, as well as direct correlations to events in her life. The influences include romanticism, Shelley's desire to write using her imagination since she was young, her mother's feminist outlook, and her father's idea that man's obsession with perfection can ultimately end in ruin. Both Victor trying to take nature's power of giving life, ultimately ending in his ruin, as well as the power of healing that nature has throughout the novel are romantic aspects that Shelley included in her novel. Shelley stated herself that she had a desire to write since an early age. As a child, I scribbled, and my favorite pastime during the hours given me for recreation was to write stories. Still, I had a dearer pleasure than this, which was the formation of castles in the air, the indulging in waking dreams, the following up trains of thought which had for their subject the formation of a succession of imaginary incidents. My dreams were at once more fantastic and agreeable than my writings. Mary's favorite place to write was her mother's grave in the St. Pancras churchyard, which is part of the reason there are so many gothic elements of Frankenstein. Feminism is also evident throughout the novel, especially with Safi rebelling against her father and other men in Turkish society. Lastly, Victor tries to perfect his monster and it ends up coming back to hurt him, which is the why his father's philosophical viewpoints are also present throughout the novel. On the other hand, there are many events in Shelley's life that correlate directly to the novel. Mary spent a significant amount of time with the Baxter family in Scotland. This family showed her affection and love, something that her actual family had failed at. This family is represented in Frankenstein as the De Lacy family. Agatha, Felix, and De Lacy teach the creature the affection that his creator never taught him. Mary was taught compassion by a family that was not her own, as was the monster. Another direct correlation in the text is the fact that Mary Shelley lost so many people in her life, as did Victor Frankenstein. She wrote, I dreamed that my little baby came to life again, that it had only been cold and that we rubbed it before the fire and it lived. About her son William. This directly correlates to Victor's desire to bring his mother back from the dead, as Shelley wants to bring her own child back from the dead. All of these aspects came together to create an amazing book that has left a lasting impact on our society. It is considered to be one of the most influential horror stories of all time, 
It has influenced pop culture and literature for nearly 200 years and has been made into numerous films. The character of the monster is known to all and makes its appearance in our society today on Halloween or in different advertising schemes such as Frankenberry cereals or the movie Frankenweenie. Mary Shelley's writing style influenced many authors to move into the horror genre, inevitably leading to the horror movies we have today. Without Mary, horror would not have developed as quickly as it did and may not have developed in the same way at all. She has left a lasting impact on our society. Next time you watch a horror movie, make sure you remember it wouldn't be the same without Mary Shelley.